welcome again. Another session. How are you, Roz? You're on mute just now. Um, we are hey, seeing who we're going tonight. Roz has got a few Wi-Fi issues. Her Wi-Fi is down, so she's uh, hotspotting off her phone tonight to join us for the session. Um, so we'll see how we go. Fingers crossed. <laughs> it all works well. <laughs> so um, tonight we are on our third of four sessions looking at assessment. So last week we were looking at forums and Flipgrid and we talked a bit about insights and the data that Teams is, would, would be generating for you as a teacher and the benefits that that has when it comes to assessments of students and what you can do with that information. Tonight's session, um, we're going to be looking at Teams assignments and the variety of different Teams assignments that we have, as well as a little bit on PowerPoint and how you can use the features that are in PowerPoint for your assessments. So I will get sharing um, the slides. I'll just share my screen just now. Now I've got the slow. I'm hoping that that is sharing. Yeah. Yeah, that's come up. Good stuff. Because then you disappear from my screen. So I've got my two, my two devices now looking at me. So we are doing uh, session three of session four tonight. Uh, tomorrow we are on at four o'clock. We were looking at reading progress and rubrics. But for anybody who hasn't joined us before, my name is Sarah Clark. I'm a biology and science teacher over at Queen Anne High School in Dunfermline. Um, and during the session, if you want to ask a question in the Twitter chat, then please do. If you, uh, not the Twitter chat, the YouTube chat, or if you're on Twitter and you want to message us during the chat, or if you're watching on demand and you have maybe a question, um, then you can at Tablet Academy SC and we can see the, say, the questions that are coming through. I'll let you introduce yourself, Roz. Hey, I'm Roslyn Lee. I'm the Digital Development Officer um, in Education for North Ayrshire Council. Um, and as you can see, I am a, I'm not a swimming, singing dog owner at the same time, but I enjoy all... Uh, all three things. So I'm hope, hoping that my hotspot will, uh, my 4G will not let me down. Um, I might sound a bit strange, I don't know, but let's keep our fingers crossed. Looking forward to tonight. That all sounds good to us from this end. So um, if you are using the Microsoft Educator Centre to log all the CPD that you're doing, there is a code down there that you can redeem. Um, and at the end of the session, we'll also be sharing a feedback form just to get some information on how you find the sessions are going, if there's anything that you think we miss that we can do, because we've got quite a few sessions coming up over this term on a variety of different topics. So we will get started tonight. Um, as we said, it's mainly on the, the Teams assignments and how you can use the features of the Teams assignments for assessment. Now, most people are probably familiar because of the situation we've been in for the last... I'm going to say 18 months, it's nearly two years. Um, but the most people have probably been using assignments. You may have been using them for assessments. I know we have been using them for informal assessments if we are fully online. Um, we've not been using them for too many formal assessments, but we're having to readjust um, how we use assessments nowadays. So the main thing um, you can see on those images there is that you can attach a whole variety of different things to your assignment. You can attach files, you can add a link to OneNote, you can upload uh, links to websites, and you can also add in new documents, whether that's a Word document, um, a PowerPoint presentation, and there's a couple of new features that you may not know have popped up. One of them is that you can attach a video recording, which we'll be talking about, or a whiteboard. So to gather maybe lots of students' um responses so they would all have maybe a whiteboard each that they could write on. So the main thing I think when you're setting your assignments for your students, particularly for an assessment, is what can you do to make it as easy as possible for students to return that work to you? You want it to work for you so that the it's easy to look at, it's easy to mark, it's easy to give feedback to them, it's easily stored but also thinking about the students and how they're using it and what device they're using. And is it easy for them to access, go through and understand the instructions, particularly if you're maybe not there at that particular point when they are doing it. So 
Um, as we said, there's lots of different things that you can attach as a resource within an assignment, depending on whether it's a research task. This was one that my class was doing. Um, they had to design a greenhouse. We do this one every year. The assignment is there every year. Um, and I attach a wakelet of resources. If you haven't looked at wakelet, that's a whole nother session, but I'd really recommend having a look at it as somewhere where you can gather lots of links and documents and videos together so that they're only going to one place. So just being able to add a web link um, means that I can add a wakelet to my assignment so the students then can access all the resources for their research task that they're doing. There's also um, an option to add a video. So a lot of the videos we use are on YouTube, or we also have them on Flipgrid um, as well for our students to access inside of class. There's also now Stream that's available if you are using it in Glow. That's came in the last wee while. If you're not within Glow, you maybe had had it longer and, and have been using it already. But you can add a link in there for a video. So your students have got a reference material there as a video with um, a document there that they have to complete as well. <clears throat> This was my um, Celebrating Diversity. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that one. But you can see I've added a, a PowerPoint presentation with the students to complete. This is for our BGE S2. Um, and the instructions for that were given to them in a video link that was set up on stream. There's also OneNotes. <clears throat> so I have a OneNote class notebook linked to my class team. And we're going to look at it again in more detail and the benefits of it. But being able to set up a page and then add that to my assignment and then it gets distribu distributed out to every student. And they're completing that task on the OneNote page. And it's just then gathering all that information um, in one place for them, for me. I can easily mark it. Um, and I suppose I can give them a variety of, of feedback on that also. You can also go in, uh, this is a, an example of one of my OneNote pages there within Teams, and this is evidence of each key area that my students are doing in class um, <clears throat> when they're working on their own for my higher human class. So the bit about stream, because that's something new that, that came up, I have actually found it quite beneficial for my tasks. Um, being able to add a video instruction Maybe for students who struggle to read lots of information, you can see here over on the right hand side, I've got quite a lot of instructions there for the students. And I know for some of them, they maybe would struggle with that. There is the option for immersive reader up on the right hand side, um, but also being able to add a video in there helps with the instructions. So when you're setting up your assignment, you click on your assignment, you go on, you click create a new assignment, and you can then put in all the information that you want. But if you click on new and then scroll down to video recording, it then gives you this box where you've got the video. So you've got a five minute limit and it's just you. So I started there. This was my um, my table. So flicking the camera around so that you can see me on this one. And then what I was able to do was give the instructions for the task to the students and it will record up to five minutes with this one. So this was me giving them the instructions. Once you're done, you then just click review on it. You can have a watch, you can trim it, you can edit it if there's a little bit too much in there that you don't want. And then once you're done, you click publish and that will then be added straight to the assignment and the kids can watch that before they go on and do the task. So being able to give them the, right, the typed instructions, but also being able to add a little bit of that human aspect where they can see you, I think can be quite beneficial. And for some kids listening to the instructions as well as um, <clears throat> seeing them written down can help. The This video was something slightly different that I had done with the stream so i actually recorded my video in stream and it was a screen recording that i did so what i was able to do was i added a link to the stream video in there and when i was telling the students what i wanted them to do i had this little screen recording of the powerpoint 
I had me in the corner explaining what it was that the students had to do. And it just made it a little bit easier for them to know what the instructions were for that a task. task. And that actually was part of our assessment. Them being able to create this um, PowerPoint was, was an assessment that we were doing with them. Oh, move past. So, Roz, uh, is this your one? I think it is. Yes, it is. Um, so we're going to look at a sort of variety of answer types that you might um, ask the pupils to return. Now, the first one, they're attaching a blank document. I actually don't like that. It's kind of the equivalent of handing a pupil um, a blank piece of paper and it's like an exam. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's a great idea. Some of them might not know where to go from. You can attach a blank document or a, a blank PowerPoint, but I, I think it's it's always better to give them something um, that's a bit more scaffolded so that, that, that it makes it a bit easier for them. Um, if you go into the next slide, Sarah, um, you can ask them to upload a photograph um, or maybe something like uh, something tangible that they've made, uh, you've given them a task to photograph something in nature or a colour or an animal or artwork that they've produced. So they can upload, and, but you would have to give them the instructions there. You can see it tells them clicking the paper clip to attach their image, because again, for some of them, that's not terribly intuitive. And I know a lot of people in lockdown, they were asking pupils to create documents from scratch on their computer and upload it into the the assignment, which again is not a great idea. You're always better to attach something for them to actually use. So they can upload um, photographs there um, into an assignment. Sarah, I think you want to see a wee bit more about images. Yeah, so um, the as Ros was saying, adding a blank document, I sometimes add a blank document, but then all I type at the top is the heading or the title slide, or if it's an extended response question, or maybe put the question on it, so that it's not, as Rose says, just something completely blank. For uploading an image, it's great to have that as an evidence there. For me and my subject, though, I find that uh, I want to be able to annotate what they're handing in. And I can't do that with an image that has been uploaded. If they're creating a model, then it's great. If I'm just looking for evidence of what they've done, that's great. But if I'm trying to give them specific feedback on a question, attaching an image here just isn't enough for me. So what um, I do is I often attach a OneNote page and then the students attach the photo to the OneNote page. So rather than attaching it to the assignment, they attach it to the OneNote page I can then easily annotate. So you can see here, this was students' work. It was a couple of um, wanted to check their understanding themselves. So it wasn't a, a formal assessment, but it meant that I could then specifically label a little bit more here. They got that one wrong and I could write down what the answer was. I can still give them that feedback if they upload an image in the team's assignment, but it's not as specific or precise um, for what my students are going to want to know. So it just gives you that, extra bit they're still uploading an image but they upload it into that one note page that i have used as my team's assignment anything else you want to add there ros no i think that's um that's a really good point it depends what you want the, the photograph for you know what if you want to to annotate over it it's just i know quite a, a few people again during lockdown had uh, young children out taking photographs of their gardens and things because they obviously couldn't go very far during lockdown, but out maybe looking for photographs of birds or whatever. And that was what they were doing, getting them to upload them um, through Teams. Yeah, so it's just looking at what um, do you want to do with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is that going on to the PowerPoint one for you? Yeah. So do you want to talk, that was yours, do you want to talk that and then I'll do the next couple? Yeah, so we mentioned kind of PowerPoint for the win and most people are familiar with PowerPoint, but what you can actually get the kids to do with it in terms of assessment is so much more than you're probably using it for. Um, being able to have students to record audio into a PowerPoint slide you know, this idea of making things invisible so they can add 
um, what their thoughts are to maybe an image or to something that they've done to enhance what is there. So the teacher can actually add in a set of slides and the students can add their audio into it. They then complete it and they can hand it in. It's great as a whiteboard as well. We do have the option in Teams now to add a whiteboard. PowerPoint also, if you put in a couple of blank slides, it's great as a PowerPoint. But I think a huge winner is the fact that you can the students can move things about. There is a draw feature in there. You can move elements about. So it acts like a whiteboard as well. Um, and it's much easier for the kids to do, I think, than Word on the phone. So, um, Rose, I'll pass it on to you for some of the examples. Okay, so um, if you're going to use PowerPoint, it's quite often a good idea to try and explain uh, in the PowerPoint how to actually answer the questions. It might be that you want to, them to drag and drop some text, or it might be that you want to type into a text box, or it might be that they, they can actually draw into it. So giving them is to try and make, as Sarah said earlier on, it's trying to make things as simple as possible and as obvious as possible. So giving them some instructions and how they can actually answer their questions is probably a good idea. And if you use the same kind of questions time and time again, they'll obviously get or the same style of questioning. They'll get to know what exactly it is that you're looking for. And, going and to my first one. slide is always a set of instructions on, on what I want them to do with the PowerPoint. So these are just some examples of things that you, you might want to do. Um, these are a mix of slides that have got instructions on them, another one's where there's an instruction slide and then there's a slide. So that's the, the drag and drop the words over onto the yellow labels uh, to show what the water cycle is for the next one. Uh, this one is about French weather and it's a wee bit more co it's a wee bit more complicated because you would obviously have done done this in the class, but it's just to remind them a wee bit about what the about the weather, and then there's instructions there. And the next slide is the, the weather. So the, these are text boxes. So they would click in beside Elia and they would put whatever word it was that um, corresponded to the, the picture there. Um, art styles as well, again, just a variety of different subjects. It might be that you have got some paintings. So if you click the next one, Sarah, different um, styles of painting the, to see what the style is and give an example of an artist beside the, the picture. And music, uh, this one is identifying what kind of notes. Again, that's just a typing in the box one. And the last one there is it's a drag and drop. So there's an audio, that's an audio file of an example of music and they basically drag the tick over beside the, whether they think it's A, B, C or D. Um, so just as I said, give clear instructions and try and make it as basic, um, or sorry, as simple as, as, as possible. And I think Sarah, you've got an example. These are more sort of younger, um, maybe primary and, and younger secondary. Sarah's got an example of when she did with her, I think it was her S3. Yeah, so just um, as I was saying, and for that drawing feature as well, means it makes it a little bit easier for me as a teacher to mark it. So one of the um, things we had when, and this was when we were in lockdown, we did this, and we'll probably still take it forward and maybe do it at other times, was uh, we have a third year, a much more formal assessment we knew that the students weren't going to be sitting in the class, but we still wanted them to complete it. Because even if the students were, you know, looking at their notes at the same time, it was that ability to be able to answer the questions rather than just being a whole load of one word answers. We were looking for them to expand and explain. So what we did was we took the original test assessment that we had and we screenshotted all the images, put that onto a PowerPoint and added this to a team's assignment. So this was our um, front bit and the kids, you'll notice everything that we want the students to complete is in a red box. So we gave them instruction, read each question carefully, type your answers in the red box. So what we've got here is this is the question and this was just a, a screenshot, sniffing sketch from our original PDF document that we had. We pasted that into the PowerPoint and then this red document is a text box and we put an outline and the kids click on it 
and they can type in this one. It's not the editable one because it's the master one. And the kids can type into the box. Um, and what we did up in the top corner as well is we put a little blue box up there for us to put down whether or not the student got the mark. So the ability to go into the draw feature and obviously if you're working in full PowerPoint, this is opened up in um, the online version, but using a finger, um, using an iPad, using your phone, you could we could go on and we could tick things and then we put how many marks the student had achieved um, over on the right hand side. And this question, for example, this was a much more complex one where they have to tick whether something is true or false and then they have to put in <coughs> a corrected word. So again, the students, they put a tick in. So we said to them, you know, if they want to put and type in yes or put a cross in, anything like that, it doesn't matter as long as there was something in there. And then they put the word in. And again, this is a three mark question. We just then went in and typed in the corner if the student got two marks or one mark. And it just meant we were able to give our students um, a, a, an assessment when they weren't necessarily able to be with us we would have liked them to have been doing it under 100% exam conditions, but we wanted to get a measure of how the students were doing. Therefore, we felt it was beneficial to do that. So if you maybe have one student that's at home and um, that can't attend your class for whatever reason, they're maybe off long-term sick or they've had an operation, they could still be doing the assessment at home um, like this without needing to you know, send in home paper copies and things like that. It's easy for you to send that out. Yes, it takes a little bit of time because you are having to, you know, screenshot the questions and put them in here. Um, our, our assessments in biology are quite long. You'll see we have lots of slides in there. Um, and we had to cut out a few questions, particularly ones where they had to draw a graph because they couldn't do that on the PowerPoint. But it meant that we had given them something more formal. We then had data on how the students were getting on in our subject. And it was easier for the students to do rather than just sending them the PDF of the assessment because they weren't going to be able to fill that in if we sent it as a team's assignment. And then asking kids to find the file, print the file off. I, I don't have a printer at home. Um, I doubt many of the kids have got printers at home. So just finding that easy way for them to, to be able to return that work to you, to fill it in and return it to you. Um, a couple of things just about forums. We use this for our, our multiple choice for formal assessments as well, all the time for gathering evidence um, with our first years right the way up. Um, we talked about, I talked about forms last week. The first session we did was, was about forms. Um, we use multiple choice a lot in our subject. And I always set my forms so that the results do not show automatically. Um, you just go into the settings so that the students don't necessarily get answers straight away, particularly if they're maybe doing it throughout a period and somebody started it and somebody's not started it at that point. Um, but I tend to link them more with Teams assignments rather than standalone forms. So if you go in to create an assi in the assignments in Teams and this time go in and create a quiz. So oh, rather than go in and say and create an assignment, you're going in and you're saying create a quiz, you then get an option to create a new forum or one that you've already made up. And then from me as the teacher's point of view, you can see here uh, what it looks like for me. You can see I've still got four that I need to send back to my students for this one. This one was due in on the 14th of January. There was a couple of latecomers on that one. Um, but it's already pre-scored them because it's self-marking. So I've set it up so that it's self-marking. Um, it's pre-scored them, but as the teacher, I then click on summary results. That takes me to the form. I can go in there and analyze the students' forms. Sometimes it's ones where they maybe have to type in a word. I can change it from zero marks to one mark, and then the final mark gets um, decided, and then it can be returned to them afterwards. So the only thing you, you need to do is you need to tell the students that's been returned to you now. Go back and have a look at the form and look at the feedback on that. Kahoot. Love a Kahoot. Kahoot. Lots, yeah. <laughs> Lots of people will be familiar with Kahoot um, and using them in class when um, pupils have devices and so on. But in Kahoot, you can also assign so that they, they 
complete it when, well, you would give them a date and they would complete it by the date. So this is something that you, we can use in Teams. If we if we had in Glow, we have a, a limitations on Teams, but if you were in a, another tenancy, it's possible that you could have Kahoot as an app at the top of the team, but we can't have that. So one way around that is actually by using um, just the link. So if you just go into the next slide, Sarah, there, I chose one about French clothing. You assign it, you give it a date that is due. There's a couple of settings there that you can also use. One thing you would need to say to the pupils is to put their proper name, not their whole name, but their first name. If you had two people with the same name, maybe the, an initial, um, not nicknames, because obviously then you wouldn't know who they were because your results will come through Kahoot. So if we go to the next one, um, at that point where it says invite more players, there's actually there's a URL there that you can use and that's your sort of dashboard, your reports for later on down at the bottom. Um, there would be, if people had completed the Kahoot, it would tell you some information, give you some data about the Kahoot so they can be used um, just as a, when you put the assignment in, just pasting it in as a link into the assignment. And okay. because Kahoot can, because Kahoot has this feature now where you can set it as a challenge, it doesn't have to be live where the student is, uh, the teacher's taking the student through them. As Rose says, I do this a lot as well, copying that URL, pasting that into the um, assignment in Teams, and then later on, once the students have done it, I just go back into Kahoot, but being able to use that as an assessment feature. And I take a screenshot of the report at the end, and then... Um, Sometimes I paste it into my OneNote teacher section so that I've got a report of it. I can add the how they got on to my team's assignment so that it goes into the grade book. There's various things you can do with the data afterwards. I think it's there. So that's, yeah. uh, that's the, the link there in the team where, where it would be added. And basically, if you if you paste the URL and go to the next part, it, it gives you a wee thumbnail image, which you can include the thumbnail image or not. It, it, uh, so that the pupils can actually see that. And that's what it comes up when you post, when you uh, paste the link in rather, that's what it looks like to you. And the next one will show you what it looks like to the, um, when it actually in the um, the assignment there. So that's, uh, the, you've got the thumbnail image there. So the next one, if we go and see the next one's quizzes. I don't, I'm never sure whether I say that correctly or not. Quizzes. Um, it's the same. It's the same kind of um, thing as Kahoot. Can you click the next? I don't know if you've clicked that. It's maybe me just been a bit slow. Yeah, it's going through. It's clicked on the there assignment. It is. Yeah. So it's um, it's basically the same thing. The thing with quiz. How do you say it? Quiz. I just call it quizzes. Quizzes. Um, so the thing with that one is there's slightly more settings. And I noticed when I was playing one the other day that it actually, if you get some wrong, if you get enough right, it gives you a second chance. And I presume that that will be a setting so that you could um, that you could maybe change that. But it's just the same thing with the URL um, that you would paste into the um, into your your assignment. Mm -hmm. The I mean we use Kahoot and quizzes a lot. I think the difference for me is the quizzes gives the kids more feedback on how they've done. So um, yeah. as an assessment, I was going to be giving them feedback anyway, but they get instant feedback and they can go back and look at what they got right and what they got wrong. And I think it just gives them a little bit more. But try out both of them. There's another one, Blue Kit, as well, that's out just now. So these can all easily be shared um, as a form of, of informal assessment for students and it can just be added to a Teams assignment for them. Um, in terms of adding OneNote pages, if you're using OneNote, um, it links up really, really well with Teams. I use a combination of Teams and the OneNote app to do the managing of it. My students, we are not one-to-one -one in our school, so our students are using the online version of Teams, usually the online version um, of OneNote within Teams as well. But for me as a teacher, I tend to create my OneNote page first in the app. Um, I then set that as an assignment in Teams. And then once the students have submitted it, I mark it in the app. So what I mean by that is you can see here my assignment is set and I've got my uh, OneNote page that has been added here. I've given it 20 points. 
So I've set 20 points there for it. I have said they can upload a photo from, of their Jota work, but into the OneNote page, not into the team's assignment. So I've made that kind of clear, hopefully, for them. And when I go into the OneNote page, when I'm marking it, I'm going through and I'm just reviewing the student work. So if I go into class notebook, I can review the student work and I find the page and I go through them bit by bit. I am marking them. I've given them a score. This student did really well and got 20 out of 20. Um, and then I actually paste in a little uh, bitmoji. I love a little bitmoji on there. So the students, just, just a wee extra thing that's in there. Um, who doesn't love a sticker no matter what age you are, whether you're 6 or 16, they all love it. So um, what I then do is I go back into Teams. So this is actually still a OneNote page where my student has uploaded the work. You'll see the one previously. The student has been typing the answers in. This student has done it on paper, but has uploaded it into OneNote. And I'm able to mark it, but I mark it. I've gone through and I've marked it in the app first. I then go through every um, team assignment. I give them a little bit of feedback. It's very generic, my feedback in Teams, because the specific feedback per question is in here. And then I put the points in and I return it back to them. So that combination of setting it up in my Teams app, marking it in my Teams app, and then I just go back to Teams, uh, sorry, setting it in the OneNote app, marking it in the OneNote app, and then I just go back to Teams to basically put the mark in for them, score it for them, and tell them that they have to look at the actual OneNote page to get the feedback on it and return it. And it keeps it all in Teams for me. Um, we also have been using OneNote for some digital assessments. So our students who are um, entitled to word processing. So not if they're using the, the reader, um, prompts or anything. It's just the students that would be getting, not digital papers, but the students who would be getting um, word processing. We've been using the assessments and putting them into OneNote. Um, what I've done, and I've got a little video on here, is... I insert the assessment first of all. So I go into OneNote, go into the students bit. So Blair Clark here, um, I've gone into assessments. I'm picking the PDF or Word document that I'm wanting to insert. Don't worry if it says it can't do that. I left that in there because the first time it sometimes tells me and then the second time it works. So I click on it. I click open and it asks me if I want it as an attachment or a printout. I insert it as a printout. So you can see now that that is inserted there on the printout, but it's images. So if I right click the image, it puts it in as a background and the kids then can't move it about or delete that by mistake. And that's quite an important part if you're using it for your assessments. I then go into the assessment section and I password protect that section. So make sure one thing I had somebody actually asked me in class the other day. Um, asked me in the, the staff room the other day, they said, I've forgotten my password for my OneNote page. Can I get it back? There is no getting it back. Take a note of it, you know, in your teacher planner for, for this or have maybe a generic one that you use across the department or something for the staff. So I set the password for the assessment so the student can't, can't get into it early. They can't get access to it if they're at home looking at their OneNote. And a little padlock will appear there. So you can see at the moment it's unlocked. So if I come out and then I go back into the assessments, it says it's password protected and I have to put the password in. So what we did was we set this up for our formal assessments, um, our, our prelims, and our students were given the password at the start of the period to unlock their assessment section of the OneNote. They then typed on the document for the students that were getting uh, word processing. Everybody else was doing it on paper. And then at the end of the period, because it was maybe only two students in the class, the teacher then went in and put a new password on that section. So you just do the same thing, right click, you know, change password, I think it gives you that option, and they then put a new one on. So the student then couldn't access it outside of class time. So for us, that just made the digital assessments where the students were doing word processing much easier because we have images, we have diagrams on there and we want the students to be able to write beside them. We find digital papers um, sometimes aren't as accessible for the students, 
or word processing makes that more difficult for the students. So we found that a great um, workaround for us and really, really beneficial. Fillable forms, Rose. Yep, uh, fillable forms are maybe not used as much. I used to use them years ago, maybe not used as much since the advent of Microsoft Forms, but it's a way to, to create, make a document into a form. And you need something called developer tools, which um, if you don't have it on your ribbon at the top, if you click the next one, Sarah, you can go into, um, into file options and customise ribbon and look for developer tools. And that's what you'll get in developer tools. So there's there's various things you can add there. You could add a box for the, person, the pupil to type in. You can add the, the, the image one is for them to add an image. You can have a tick box. Um, you can have a drop down menu and so on. So it just depends. It, they do take a wee bit of time to, to sort of make. Um, and as I say, maybe most of the facilities of it now or the functionality of it now is, has been superseded by um, by forms. There's also a date picker as well, the other B calendar. And there, there's a got an existing Word document. I think you can then kind of yeah, change you that using change the developer. It. So yeah. maybe if you're not wanting to change, if you've got an assessment already done in Word and you don't want to yeah. have to put it all into a form, this would be great for that. Because it's, it's just really difficult, as you know, to type into a Word document without everything moving so there's a box there as well that will add the bit the bottom bit on that um book review as you can actually just type a paragraph in there and nothing moves um mm -hmm. you know it's not going to mess up the text or anything like that so um they're quite useful as well the fillable forms and the last one there is using templates there is a there's a variety of templates in Word. There's not just these ones. There's other ones that you can actually um, if you there's I think it says more templates somewhere, and you can actually download more templates. There's templates for all sorts of things, and really really good for all these different um, subjects written there, and as well as story writing and non-fiction writing. Um, you can create your own. You can save your own um, as a you can save a Word document as a, a template. And if you click the next one, Sarah, that's the report template that I chose uh, to show. So that's um, basically telling the people where to type on the um, on the document and it comes out looking, well, really quite professional, I think. But it just gives them a wee bit of scaffolding. As Sarah said again at the beginning about the blank document, even a, a title, something to give them a wee bit of, of a hint or a clue rather than this blank sheet of paper. So the templates are actually quite a good way to do that. They give a little bit of information as well. I mean, you know, to say it'll say, you might like the photo in the cover, um, but if it's not ideal, you can replace it with another one. So it's, it's giving them things that they could be doing with the report too. So yeah, save as a word template there, how you're, you're saving your word document. And I think that is um, pretty much us for tonight, Rose. Um, I'm hoping that it's giving people uh, some ideas for the variety of ways that they could be doing assessments in class. Obviously, um, whether those are informal assessments for gathering data, more formal ones, fun ones, there's lots of different ways that you can do it. I think having a variety of different ways just keeps things you know, that 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 bit more, you don't stagnate in the class. The kids are like, oh, we're doing this today for assessment. And I mean, I had one kid say one day, what is, is the Kahoot the test? And I went, yeah, it is. And it didn't feel as scary for them when they were doing their multiple choice in a Kahoot than if they were doing the multiple choice sitting down with a bit of paper in front of them. And um, they still did it on their own. They still didn't converse with anybody else. And I then didn't have to mark it because it was already gathered for me. So looking at a variety of different ways and, and what might work in your classroom for the age group that you're using and what you've got access for. So as I said, um, I noticed there's a few things been coming through in the, the chat during that. I don't think there's any questions um, that, are, that are coming in, just people's comments on what they've done. Um, we'll have a little look at the Tablet Academy web uh, Twitter page as well, if there's anything. There is a MET code there for anybody who is using the Microsoft Educator Centre, as we said. And I'm just going to stop sharing my screen so that I'm coming back in. And we are back tomorrow with our final part of assessment. Rose, what are we doing? 
Um, we are doing reading progress and rubrics, and I'm hoping that I have Wi-Fi because I, I did only manage to drop out once. You may have noticed, but it's been a wee bit stressful tonight because you did sound a bit like a Dalek at times. <laughs> oh well, well, it's it's uh, we managed to. You came in and and we we ploughed on through. Hopefully, it's back tomorrow. Um, the reading progress one, I think, is one that whether you are primary, secondary you know, modern languages, science teacher, there is an option for using reading progress and the information that that gives um, tomorrow. We'll definitely be talking about that. And because it's a relatively new feature, I don't know if anybody's that familiar with it yet. So if you have used it, we would love to hear if you're using it. Um, and the rubrics is something that is one of my passions. I love rubrics to make things a little bit easier. So lots of examples coming up tomorrow. We will see you at four o'clock, quick dash home from school. Um, yeah. And we'll see you then. Take care. See you then. Thanks. Bye. Bye.